Hello and welcome to Ericon Lodge. I'm Dr. Greg Mertz. I'm the host of this series of micro lectures that are being brought to you from the New England Wildlife Center. Um, this series is going to be called uh, Comparative Anatomy. We're going to be looking at um, how different bodies are constructed. Everything from invertebrate animals, meaning the clams and insects and sponges of the world, um, all the way through to the vertebrate animals which includes things like the raccoon, uh, which we will try to use actually a, f a fair amount in this particular series. Each one of our talks uh, will uh, last maybe three to four minutes long, and throughout the series we will uh, try to give you some, some basic information about um, how different bodies work and uh, you know how they compare and contrast uh, to one another. We're being brought uh, to you from um, Ericon Lodge. Just a word about that before we get started. Ericon Lodge is a studio uh, within the New England Wildlife Center. It is actually an authentic um, Algonquin longhouse. It was constructed by Unia Kowal, who was our artist in residence. Um, she studied very closely how the Algonquins uh, went about building their, their houses and uh, she went out into the woodlands and cut the saplings and gathered the bark and reeds and all that sort of thing and constructed the structure that we're sitting in. Um, and you can see uh, around me, uh, beyond me, the different uh, pieces of sapling and bark and, and whatever. It's a great structure. Uh, it's a great place to teach from. Uh, and it is also open to the public, so if you ever come to the Wildlife Center, you're more than welcome to come in and, uh, you know, poke and prod and take a look. Okay, let's talk about comparative anatomy. And we're going to start this from a, uh, a very basic point of view, and that is that uh, the, the, every body, every animal, in fact, every tree, every um, protozoan, every fungus, every whatever, has a particular structure. And uh, each individual species is very similar uh, within the species, meaning every individual looks very much like the next individual. Now that's not to say that in some species you have something called dimorphic uh, uh, development, which means that, that the females may look very different from the males. Um, and of course as, as animals grow up uh, from being uh, uh, babies to adults, uh, they will also change. But by and large the basic structure is the same. and uh, the basic structure allows that particular animal to work and survive in its particular habitat and environment. Now through the ages, over the millennia, uh, habitats change and so do environments change and so do bodies change. That process of bodies changing a little bit or even in jumps and, and uh, uh, surges forward, um, those changes are called evolution. And so habitats evolve, um, environments evolve, and so do individual species evolve. We know that some bodies work very well, some species work very well in a particular uh, habitat, like to give an example, raccoons. Raccoons work very well in suburban and uh, rural settings. Even in urban settings, they work, uh, they work very well. And then in other uh, settings, the animals don't work so well. And as habitats evolve, it may cause, may trigger the extinction of a particular uh, kind of animal. Uh, and so we know those animals only as spot fossils, things like eurypterids and trilobites and uh, some of the brachiopods and, of course, the dinosaurs and all that. So there's very much we're looking and comparing how one body works in comparison to another. At the same time, we know that those bodies change and change slowly over time. Uh, through a process called evolution. In our next micro lecture, our mic micro talk, uh, we will look more specifically about how bodies are put together in terms of um, uh, tissues and organs and organ systems. And uh, until the next time, thank you very much, Greg Mertz. I will look forward to seeing you again from Ericon Lodge.